Much like the body of believers call Christians today, the Essenes are largely misunderstood, and that's unfortunate due to the amazing kinship Christians have had with the Essenes spanning the last 2,000 years and the end of two ages. What the Essenes seem to understand about the beginning and ending of ages is tied to the use of a much different calendar than the one used by the Pharisees and Sadducees. In fact, according to Essene writing, the Pharisees were using a corrupt pagan lunar calendar and the Essenes preserved the original solar calendar that had been given from God to Adam. Even more astonishing, this was prophesied in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Book of Jubilees, which was kept by the Essenes in Qumran states, quote, and there will be those who will make observations of the moon, for this one, the moon, corrupts the started times and comes out earlier each year by 10 days. And in this way, they will corrupt the years and will observe a wrong day as the day of testimony and a corrupted festival day. And everyone will mix holy days with unclean ones and unclean with holy, for they will err as to months and Sabbaths and festivals and jubilees." End quote. Now this corrupted calendar of the Pharisees would become the Hillel II calendar in the middle of the third century, which is what modern Judaism uses today. The Essene calendar, however, is more mysterious to figure out as much that was known about it in ancient times was lost only to be rediscovered in the 1990s. Dr. Ken Johnson has done some amazing work with the Dead Sea Scrolls in an effort to restore the Essene calendar. And what he has turned up is nothing short of amazing. The Essene calendar is based on the seven-day week. Saturday is still the Sabbath, making Sunday the first, Monday the second, and so on. Interestingly, because the sun, moon, and stars were created on the fourth day, the Essene calendar has the beginning of every year start on a Wednesday. This emphasis on the fourth day continued even in the early church as evidenced by some of the writings of the church fathers, credited with writing the first commentary on the book of Revelation, Victorinus, of Patau wrote on the creation of the world. On the fourth day he made two lights in the heaven, the greater and the lesser, that the one might rule over the day and the other over the night, Genesis 1, 16 through 17. The lights of the sun and moon, and he placed the rest of the stars in heaven, that they might shine upon the earth, and by their positions distinguish the seasons, and years, and months, and days, and hours. Now is manifested the reason of the truth, why the fourth day is called the Tetris, why we fast even to the ninth hour, or even to the evening, or why there should be a passing over even to the next day. Therefore, this world of ours is composed of four elements, fire, water, heaven, earth. These four elements, therefore, form the quaternion, of times or seasons. The sun also and the moon constitute throughout the space of the year four seasons of spring, summer, autumn, winter. And these seasons make a quaternion. And to proceed further down still from that principle, lo, there are four living creatures before God's throne, four gospels, four rivers flowing in paradise. Genesis 2, 10, four generations of people, from Adam to Noah, from Noah to Abraham, from Abraham to Moses, from Moses to Christ the Lord, the Son of God, and four living creatures, a man, a calf, a lion, an eagle, and four rivers, the Pison, the Gihon, the Tigris, and the Euphrates. The man Christ Jesus, the originator of these things, whereof we have above spoken, was taken prisoner by wicked hands by a quaternion of soldiers. Therefore, on account of this captivity by a quaternion, on account of the majesty of his works, that the seasons also wholesome to humanity, joyful for the harvest, tranquil for the tempests, may roll on. Therefore, we make the fourth day a station or a supernumerary fast. End quote. The Essene calendar is based on a 364-day year 
that begins on the spring equinox, when there is an equal amount of day and night. It is also set up so that everything comes out the same every year, because 364 days mean the year is exactly 52 weeks with no leftover days. 52 times 7 equals 364, for example. Passover is always on the 14th of the Hebrew month, Nisan, which is always on a Tuesday. By contrast, the Pharisee and even our Gregorian calendars are imperfect, as we can't pinpoint down to the day when the holiday will occur. We may know that Christmas is on December 25th every year, but the day itself might change. For example, in 1998, Christmas Day was on a Friday, while in 2014, it was on a Thursday. Every year is different. There is even a reference to the 364-day year starting on the spring equinox in the Book of Enoch, which was found among the Dead Sea Scrolls. Enoch 7232b, quote, and the night is equal to the day, and the year is exactly as to its days 364." End quote. Leap years on the Essene calendar are handled differently as well. Our Gregorian calendar includes 365 days per year, which generally means that every four years we add an extra leap day. The modern Jewish calendar has only 354 days per year, meaning that once about every three years a leap month is added. The Essene calendar, however, maintains the Sabbath cycle, meaning that when the calendar becomes seven days off, a leap week is added. This keeps all of the Sabbaths in sync, a very important practice for the rituals of priests. The Essenes also somehow had an understanding of the total number of years of human history, from creation to the time of the establishment of the new heavens and new earth, and how this long period is to be divided. The totality of human history, according to the Essenes, is to be 7,000 years from the creation of Adam. For example, we learn from Genesis chapter 5 that Adam was 130 years old when his son Seth was born. For this way of figuring times in years, it doesn't matter how long Adam was in the Garden of Eden, how old he was when he and Eve rebelled, how old they were when they were kicked out of the Garden and so on. For our purposes, what matters is that we know Adam was 130 years old when Seth was born. Therefore, according to Essene understanding, Seth was born in the year 130 AM for Anno Mundi, the year of the world. Instead of having the BCAD system that we currently use, the Essenes counted their years from creation forward. With careful calculations and working on the assumptions that the AM calendar hasn't been tampered with over time, and that certain biblical, extra-biblical, and historical data likewise hasn't changed, we can determine the date of creation, which would be the year 1 AM, which technically would be a year after creation since we name years based on how much time has already passed and not on what year is starting. For example, a baby is considered to be one year old, a full year after birth, rather than on the day of its birth, year one. This would correspond to our year 3926 through 3925 BC, depending on the month and how we're counting the years. The 7,000 years of human history were split into three periods of 2,000 years and one final period of 1,000 years called ages. Now this final 1,000 years was seen as the ultimate Sabbath. Each age was split into periods of 500 years called Onaz, each of which was split into 10 periods of 50 years called Jubilees. Each Jubilee was split into seven periods of seven years called Shemitas, and one additional Jubilee year. Therefore, according to the Essenes, all time is understood as subsets. A year is 365 days. A Shemitah is seven years. A Jubilee is seven Shemitahs plus one year, or 50 years. An Onah is 10 Jubilees, or 500 years. A Millennium is two Onahs, or 20 Jubilees, or 1,000 years. An Age is two Millennia, or four Onahs, 
or 40 jubilees, or 2,000 years. The last stage is a half-length Sabbath, or one millennium, or two onahs, or 20 jubilees, or 1,000 years. All of human history is four ages, technically three and one-half ages, or three ages and one millennium, or seven millennia, or 14 onahs, or 140 jubilees, or 1,000 shemitas, or 7,000 years. As of the end of AD 2020, this last year, we were at the end of the year 5945 AM, meaning that in a little more than four years from now, we will be entering the final jubilee of our current age. We find additional information about these ages by tying together some ancient writings by historians and church fathers, as well as the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Bible. For example, an ancient tradition recorded in a Jewish text called Tana Deve Eliah is thought to have been written between the 3rd and 10th centuries AD. When reading through that work, it's clear that revisions have been added throughout the centuries. However, it seems to preserve a tradition of the general understanding of ages. It reads, quote, It was taught in the school of Elijah, the world will endure 6,000 years, 2,000 desolation, 2,000 Torah, 2,000 the Messianic age. But because of our many sins, some of those final 2,000 years have already passed. Of course, this being a Jewish source and not a Christian one that would recognize that the Messiah has already come, teaching instead that because of the sins of Israel, God decided not to allow the Messiah to come when he was expected, we need help from the Dead Sea Scrolls and Church Fathers to recognize what these ages are and what happened during them. The first age was called the Age of Confusion or the Age of Chaos and lasted from creation to the call of Abraham. The first set of 2,000 years or 1 a.m. to 2,000 a.m. The second age was the Age of Torah, lasting from the time of Abraham to the end of the sacrificial system, 2000 AM through 4000 AM. The final age is called the Age of Grace, 4000 AM through 6000 AM. Finally, the last age is the Messianic Kingdom, or Kingdom Age, 6000 AM through 7000 AM. Now, involving these very specific predicted dates, the Essene combined a surprisingly large number of prophetic predictions in the Dead Sea Scrolls related to the coming Messiah. They knew that he would be God incarnate. They knew that he would die for our sins in AD 32. They knew that he would initiate the coming age of grace. Modern scholarship says no one knows what happened to the Essenes after they wrote down all these very accurate prophecies Many people say it seems that they just vanished one day from the historical record after the first century. However, when you understand what they believed and what they were looking forward to, what happened to them is obvious. The believing remnant of Essenes who did not fall into heretical factions were expecting the Messiah. And when Jesus came, died, resurrected, and ascended into heaven, the Essenes became Christians and went out to preach the gospel to the world. They became a part of those of us who are Christians. Given that the Essenes were so accurate leading up to the first advent of Christ, what can we expect in coming days? Well, in just four short years from now, according to the Essenes, we're going to be entering the final jubilee of the age, the final age before the return of Jesus Christ. Now that may sound incredible, but the Essene calendar absolutely does put an exact year as being the end of one age and the beginning of the next. However, prophetic events that are supposed to happen around this time don't always work out so precisely. In fact, the beginning of one age tends to bleed into the end of the previous. This bleeding through of ages tends to occur within the final jubilee of an age. It's almost as if the old age is winding down, getting tired, 
And the new age is so excited to begin, it begins preparing a bit earlier than its exact starting date. And we can think of this in terms of a relay race, in which team members cover equal distances in a race, where each takes a turn carrying and then handing off a baton. During that handing off period, at the end of one runner's time and the beginning of the next, both runners are actually running together at the same time, in a marked exchange zone. Ages work exactly like that. The marked exchange zone of ages is the final jubilee of the age that's about to end. In AD 2025, in four years from now, if the Essene calendar is correct, we're going to enter the marked exchange zone of our final age and the kingdom age. What an exciting time to be alive, right? We see many examples of this when we consider how the age of Torah ended and the age of grace began between the years 25 and AD 75. As Christians, of course, we agree that the church really started with Jesus. Some would say it began at his birth because there was finally a Messiah on earth for people to accept. Others would say the church originated at the start of or possibly sometime during his three and a half years of ministry on earth. Still others would say it started at his death or his resurrection or his ascension or at Pentecost with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. All of these events have three things in common. First, all contributed to formation of the church. Second, all were the main fulfillments of prophecies those living in that age were looking for. And third, all occurred before the technical end of the age in AD 75. So we must remember that when we say that an age begins on a certain year, we're talking about an exact number. By the time of the exact year, everything that needs to be in place for the operation of the next age should be in place. Here's an illustration of how this works. Let's say that we're going to have a birthday party at three o'clock this Friday afternoon, and there's gonna be a cake, presents, games, and live performances. By that exact time on that exact day, Every aspect of the party will already be in place. On Tuesday, I might hire the live performers. Wednesday, I could start buying all the presents. When Thursday rolls around, I can have all the games delivered. And at noon on Friday, I can pick up the cake. Finally, between one o'clock and 2.45 on Friday afternoon, I might make sure all of the components of the party are together and go through my final checklist before guests start arriving. Technically, as stated on the invitation, the party starts at three o'clock on Friday afternoon, but many of the elements of the party were changing and coming to pass since the prayer Tuesday. Much is the same way with ages. By AD 75, everything should have been in place without any event remaining to be completed before the church age could finally begin. The Messiah had to be born teach, die, resurrect, and ascend. The Holy Spirit had to come. The temple in Jerusalem had to be destroyed and the sacrificial system had to finally be done away with. Then and only then, when all of those prophecies were fulfilled, could the age of grace or the church age officially begin. Now this might lead us to wonder what the final event was that occurred in AD 75. We all have at least a basic understanding of the temple in Jerusalem being destroyed in 70 AD, but what occurred five years later? There's some really interesting history here. While the destruction of the Jerusalem temple definitely dealt a hard blow to the sacrificial system of the Pharisees, it didn't completely demolish it. There was actually another Jewish temple in Egypt that was destroyed by the Romans in AD 73. Then the final nail in the coffin of the pharisaical sacrificial system was hammered in when a new type of Sanhedrin was established in Yavne that decided prayer rather than sacrifice was sufficient. This reestablishment was the beginning of modern rabbinic Judaism. According to some sources, the last president of the old Sanhedrin died and the first president of the new establishment, Sanhedrin, officially began his duties in exactly AD 75. This means by AD 75, everything was in place for the age of grace to officially begin. Now we can assume that the same would be true for the end of our age of grace. If the Essene calendar is correct, 
By AD 2075, everything should be in place for the millennial reign of Christ to begin. This means all of the prophecies should already be fulfilled. Not only everything having to do with the seven-year tribulation period, but also the return of Jesus, the judgment of the false antichrist, the false prophet, and everyone who took the mark of the beast, the binding of Satan in the abyss, the rewards of the righteous being received, the establishment of Jesus' rule in Jerusalem, the placement of international politics during that time, and anything else, so that in 2075, everything will be in order for the kingdom age to begin without any pieces left to be put into place except enjoy the next thousand years. Numerous prophecies still have to be fulfilled prior to the kingdom age, however. Many of them concern the seven-year tribulation period. We also have a possible rapture and the events after the tribulation to deal with. And it's impossible to know exactly where to place these happenings along the prophetic timeline. However, we can look for patterns shown to us from the end of the previous age of Torah. If Jesus came the first time relatively early, in the final jubilee of the age of Torah, then it's reasonable to assume that he might return early in the final jubilee of our age of grace, which the Essenes predicted begins in the year Zeitgeist 2025. The information that I just shared with you is only the tip of the iceberg of what I reveal in my new book, Zeitgeist 2025. In fact, much of what I uncover in this book is too hot for mainstream platforms like YouTube and Facebook and would immediately be censored. But now, for the first time ever, you are going to discover hidden secrets and forgotten prophecies surrounding the year 2025, how the current U.S. government is tied to America's occult destiny, lost prophecies from Qumran forecasting 2025 as the final age of man, why historians and intelligence agencies foresee a totalitarian world government by 2025, how America's capital city is laid out to actuate the arrival of the Antichrist, about the malevolent Orwellian trinity currently converging, the means by which the population's thinking and speaking are being homogenized to create a nation of assimilated devotees who are going to embrace the Antichrist, the deep esoteric meanings that names and titles held in ancient societies, the impact they had upon destiny, and what that precedent could mean now for America's near future. Who the mysterious character Melchizedek of Genesis 14 truly was, what the people of the name covenant is, and much more. So, go to sidroth.org forward slash horn or click the link below to get your digital copy of my revelatory new book, Zeitgeist 2025, so you can count yourself among the ones prepared for what is coming next.